Good morning, everybody. Morning. I'm going to give it a few minutes to let everybody jump on. Thanks for joining us this morning. Okay, so as people jump in uh, on our call this morning, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for joining us again today. We appreciate the support and try to bring you some current, up-to-date and important information about our market. Obviously with everything going on, we know that it is. it, it was already different times and now there's, there's even more happening. So hopefully everybody's being safe and taking care of themselves and uh, supporting each other through these times. So very important because these uh, these times are trying whether you realize it or not. I, I find a lot that folks are having these emotions that they don't realize they're even building up. So it's, it's important to do self care and take care of yourselves during these times. So anyway, thanks for being here again today. We have a special guest today on top of our esteemed panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just a quick intro with everybody if you guys haven't joined us in the past. We have, today our special guest is Mr. Raul Daniels and he is the Vice President of Catering for the Palms Casino. He's on the executive team for the Stations Casinos and he's gonna give us an update as to what it looks like for them on the opening. I mean, June 4th is tomorrow, so we're scheduled to open tomorrow. We have my partner in this journey, Mr. Carl Bassett from Home Vesters. Thank you, Carl. And Mr. Aaron Taylor, are you there? I see, I don't see his lovely face. I usually see his lovely face, but Mr. Aaron Taylor um, will be on with us and Mr. Dustin DeHart with Nova Home Loans. And of course, Mr. Jeff Belknap, who is helping us. He's gonna be helping us with the chat. So make sure that you guys, if you have any questions, you gear it towards the chat. I'm gonna try and be engaged with you guys the whole time. And then Jeff is gonna pay attention to the chat. Our first 30 minutes is kind of an overview and our second 30 minutes is going to be a and a So line up your questions so that we're ready to roll at the 30 minute mark. Anywho, okay. so. As we know, we have gone into phase two of this next journey here. And Carl, is there any changes that you saw on your end, particularly going to, into this phase? I don't know, real estate, real estate wise, no. I mean, I don't, it, 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 it's hot. I mean, I, I think anyone probably has that uh, in the back of their mind, they say, okay, I'm, I'm worried about winter and I'm worried about fall, but the market is hot right now. Um, I would like to hear a comment. So my, the perception that I have during the last downturn, the properties that went down first and were last to come back were town uh, condos and townhomes. So I don't know, Aaron comments or we can comment later on it, but I'm seeing anything single family that I throw out there. As long as I'm under 400,000, 350 and below, I don't have any issues selling it. However, if it's a condo or a townhome, I'm sitting. Um, I'm just not getting the traction or I'm having to lower it down, lower it down to get, we, we had a townhome go under contract yesterday, but I, I'm seeing struggle with condo and townhomes. I, so I'd love other people's opinion on condos, townhomes, but other than that, I mean, every, everything is moving along. So I don't, I don't see significant changes, uh, at least in the next month or two. Well, that's exciting news. Okay. Well, um, in that, I'm, I'm going to get back to that conversation as well. But well, I think one of the biggest changes that we know is coming is that the casinos are supposed to open. So um, with that, we invited Mr. Raul Daniels, who's going to give us an outlook on station casinos overall and what their outlook is and how they put together their plan to open. They are the large beast in the room of our town for local casinos and kind of run the show and do a very, very good job at it, I might add. I'm a big fan. So Raul, what is, thank you, first of all, so much for being here. I really, really greatly appreciate you joining us. But um, tell us a little bit about what's going on with you first, and then we'll get a little bit more into the details of what's happening with your corporation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having us. Um, so we're really excited, as most of you know, tonight at midnight at 12.01 a.m., uh, Station Casinos will open up. Uh, 
tw uh, nine of our properties here in uh, in Vegas, the largest ones being Red Rock and Green Valley Ranch, obviously, but uh, some of our station properties are also opening up. Um, and we're, we think this is a great uh, first phase for our city to come back. Obviously, the success of the casino industry, um, you know, trickles down to a lot of industries here locally. So um, we've m taken as many precautions as we can um, to make sure that we minimize the spread of the virus, that our guests feel safe, they feel comfortable. But at the same time that, you know, they're, they're able to give back to, um, you know, having fun and, uh, and socializing and putting some money in the slot machine and having a drink at the bar and getting together with their friends and seeing their favorite bartenders and their favorite cocktail servers. Um, and I think that'll be tonight at, at 12.01 will be a huge indicator, I think, of, of a first step uh, as to where um, the city and the recovery of our city is going. So we're very, very excited. And we've done a lot, a lot of work. Um, if you go on our website, we put together a 16-page document that outlines every single um, uh, point initiative that we've taken on to make sure that we do our part um, in opening up safely. Um, and it'll start with... Um, you know, uh, valets your car if you decide to valet. Um, when the car is given back to you, it'll be um, electro sprayed, electromagnetic sprayed, so that uh, we eliminate any virus in there. Our valet attendants will be wearing gloves. They'll be wearing um, seat covers. Uh, we'll put in your car. Um, when you walk into the property, you'll have your temperature temperature uh, uh, taken to make sure that um, oh. you know, you're good to come in. Um, It'll be non-invasive. It'll you'll just walk. It takes literally a half a second. You stand in place. There's an infrared camera uh, that's projected on you, and they just tell you to come on in. Um, all the machines are socially distant, as you know. I'm, I'm sure you've seen. Um, we can only allow uh, three people per poker table. I mean, sorry, per, per blackjack table. Every other slot machine is turned off to make sure we encourage social distancing. Um, our restaurants have all separated their tables at uh, six feet apart. Our bars, we put together groupings of bar stools so that groups can sit, groups that arrive together or are together, they can sit together, but there's at least six feet away from the next group. Um, our entire staff is wearing a PPE. Um, I'm in the property right now, so I'm not wearing a mask, but the minute I step out of my office, I have to have a mask on. Um, that's true for all of our employees that will be working tonight and moving forward until, until further notice. Um, and we also are encouraging our guests to wear a mask. Um, if they don't bring one, they can go to our security podium and, and get, get a complimentary mask if they choose to wear it. It's not, um, it's not we're not mandating it. Um, we're not, you know, the PPE police. Um, if, but if they choose to wear one, we have complimentary ones here. Um, if you ch stay in a hotel room, I mean, what we're doing, it, we're, what our amazing housekeeping department is doing to these rooms when you check out is insane. Like when you, when you arrive to the property and you check in, you will walk up to your room, put your key in as normal, but your room will be sealed. It'll have a sticker saying that that room, it, we, you know, we have cleaned it, we have detailed it, we have um, uh, uh, done everything we can to make sure that room is as safe as possible. And then when the housekeeping department is done, they put a sticker that seals the room. No one is, else is allowed to go inside that room until the guest arrives and breaks that seal to go in the room. So there's a lot of really, um, behind the scenes stuff that is being done as well. Um, but, you know, we're, we're excited to welcome our first guest um, at 12.01 today. Wow, that's amazing. So you guys, you guys jumped right in. You, you were said June 4th and took it literally right after midnight. 12.01, 12.01. Um, a lot of our, our uh, uh, companies in town too, uh, unfortunately because of the protests happening, uh, some of, most, most of the hotels were gonna open at 12.01 today. Well, tomorrow morning. Um, but because the, the properties that are closest to some of the protests that are still going on, they're, they've delayed it. So I, I know, for example, MGM, when um, they've delayed it to 10 a.m., but we still feel comfortable that we're going to be safe and provide a safe environment at 12.01. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That's exciting. Um, I, I spoke to you a little bit yesterday and I didn't, I was unaware and that is why I'm so happy to have you with, you know, our gaming industry. You get a whole different look at things than, than we do. We dive in and we're all real estate all the time, right? But we need to know what's going on in our valley. So I didn't realize that the restaurants had already opened. So you kind of had an idea of what was coming in, right? Your restaurants opened yeah. and how that flow happened. Was it a positive thing? Did people immediately like start making reservations? Oh yes, it was, it was, uh, I don't know if any of you have been out to eat yet, but I think if you go out now, it's 
it, it's surprising how quick this, how, how ready everyone was to get out and to be social again. And again, being safe and taking precautions if you choose to. But, um, you know, for example, we opened our restaurants on Friday and I was walking by um, T-Bunk, which is our steakhouse here at Red Rock. And um, I was talking to the manager and they were, so, I mean, they had over 200 reservations on Friday, which was the first day that we opened. Um, and me normally sitting at Palms, I wasn't really familiar with, with the volume of T-Bones. Um, so I was like, well, you know, that sounds like a great number. What does a normal Friday look like before COVID, right? And he was like, oh no, that is, we are very excited. Um, and I went in and had uh, just a quick appetizer and a cocktail there on Friday night. And I mean, the energy of the room, the staff is just so happy to be back to work, yeah. um, you know, making that money. Um, they're, they're working with a mask on, but I kept telling the bartenders that were taking care of us, you can tell that they're happy and they're smiling underneath that mask. Um, and I, I didn't see a lot of our guests wearing masks, but everybody was just really excited. The energy, I mean, everybody was drinking, having a good time. They went till late at night. Um, I went, I left early, uh, but I went to one of my neighborhood restaurants and uh, there were people dancing at the bar um, at a, <laughs> an Italian neighborhood restaurant. And, and, and yeah, and so I, I think people are just, you know, we did it, I think Vegas did a great job of, of you know, flattening the curve and being responsible, but I think it's time that we get out and we start the economy again. I think you can see that in people. I mean, the restaurant, my favorite restaurant, my husband and I's favorite restaurant in town is downtown. We live downtown um, and it's uh, Esther's Kitchen. And I'm not kidding you, we have not been able to get in there because they uh, are they're sold out every, uh, it's a small restaurant and there's six socially distancing tables, but you can't make a reservation in Esther's Kitchen unless you do it three or four days in advance. It's, the demand is there for sure. So everything that's going on, there's a, there's a lot of negative going on, but obviously we, we got people just antsy to get out. The, everything you're saying really makes me comfortable being out in, in the market, in the world today, going to a casino, because it sounds like you guys are taking extreme, extreme precautions. So um, I'm excited about that. Can you give us a little bit of an idea on which hotels are opening and what the reservations are looking like and what convention season. I mean, that's part of a huge part of our economy as well. So what, and I'm sorry, that's a three part question. You can break it down, but um, what the convention world is looking like for you guys, how you are setting that up for the future. Cause you know, we have some, some folks that think we're going to take a, a hit for a lot longer and some folks that think it's, you know, actually going to recover um, for what's been happening at a decent pace. So. Yeah. So um, the interesting thing is that you know, the, the, the guidelines that came from the governor was that hotels were able to book at 30%, right? Um, okay. So um, at a property like um, Red Rock, we have about a little short of 800 rooms. So we can book somewhere around 250 or so around there. Um, but I can tell you that we are almost sold out um, for tomorrow. Um, wow. So our sister property, Green Valley Ranch. Um, so on the station side, we're opening up Green Valley Ranch, Red Rock, uh, Boulder Station, Palace Station, uh, Sunset Station. Our Fiesta properties are not opening up yet, and neither is Palms. Again, the only reason Palms isn't opening is because that property is just a lot more dependent on tourism. Um, whereas, for example, most station properties, our casino guests live within three miles um, from the hotel that they that they frequent. Um, so. We see, we're seeing a lot of demand from the region, from the West Coast, from Arizona, from, from uh, California, from uh, Utah. Um, a lot of our locals are even doing staycations uh, this weekend and into next. Um, it's no surprise that, you know, a lot of the hotels, for example, MGM Mirage originally said they were only going to open um, Bellagio and New, and New York, New York. And at the last minute, they also threw in um, MGM Grand in there, which is a massive property. So they obviously saw a, a huge demand for it. Um, yeah. and I saw a story last night that um, Aria will be coming on a, a, about a week or two from now. Um, Wynn originally said they were only going to open Wynn, and they have now um, announced they're opening up both Wynn and Encore. Venetian, the same. Venetian was the only one, and now they're opening up Venetian and Palazzo. Um, so I think the demand is definitely there. We're really excited about what we're seeing as far as reservations go in our hotel and our restaurants. Um, tonight, when I'm, I, I have no doubts that I'm that we're going to see a ton of people playing at midnight, uh, and hopefully well into the into the into the, the 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 morning and the afternoon. But I think, 
you know, it's it for me, from my field of what I'm focused on in, in Las Vegas is conventions um, and events. So, you know, as you probably can imagine, you know, our job is to bring people together, right? And Vegas is one of the largest cities in the entire world that does it, the, the one that does it probably the most successfully. And it's no, um, you know, secret that every single major hotel company in town was expanding convention space because you know at the beginning of vegas it was all about casino 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 and then we kind of pivoted of 15 20 years ago and started paying a lot more attention to the fmb world um the amenities the nightclubs the pools um, and, and although that it brings a lot of tourists in town the profit margin on those kind of areas of our business are, are not as high right Whereas, you know, we have expanded our convention space, um, so has MGM, so has Mandalay Bay. Uh, the Wynn is uh, about to open uh, 200, 250,000 additional square feet of meeting space. Caesars Palace just finished the forum, their new convention space. So the reason why we're all focusing on convention is because convention business is extremely profitable for our city. Um, it, you know, it brings in people with top dollars um, they're here to entertain, they're here to network, they're here to schmooze their clients, they're here to spend money, they're here to see shows, um, eat out at fancy restaurants, uh, host their clients, um, and then, you know, host meetings and events at our hotels. And so we're really focused on how to, how to make that safe. And, and all of the initiatives that we've taken um, in the last few months to how to make our hotel and our casino and our restaurant guests feel safe, we're, we, we've done the same on the convention side. So we've come up with floor plans of how to socially distance um, in, in a meeting space, um, how to, how to, you know, we're, we're, you're probably going to see buffets disappear for the short term. Um, you're, you're definitely going to see a lot, um, a lot bigger meeting space, a lot groups taking up a lot more square footage just so that we can provide that socially distanced space. Um, and then the very interesting thing too is a lot of people are going to do hybrid. So, if 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 let's say I'm I'm attending a convention, right? It's a thousand people. The general yeah. session, the general session will be a thousand people, right? But I don't feel comfortable attending that. I still want to come to Vegas. I still want to see my clients. I still want to network. I still want to go to the breakouts and, and the smaller meetings. But I'm just maybe not as comfortable going to the huge two, three, four thousand person general session. So right. we're coming up with ideas on how to do hybrids. So maybe, you know, you go to dinner with your clients, you go to breakout sessions, you go to informative sessions with, with smaller groups, but then you might go up to your room and watch the general session from your hotel room. Um, That's or great. Um, if you have those um, out of the country guests that may still not be able to travel or, or we may not be, uh, we, we may still have some travel bans on that those guests can enjoy the convention virtually. And so maybe instead of a thousand people flying to Vegas, we might have 750, 800 for, for the short term. Um, what we're seeing initially, and I, I was just talking to the lady here that handles social business for our company, um, is that people wanna celebrate. So graduations, um, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, weddings, they're definitely back. Um, she, she, in fact, she has a, a, a wedding next weekend um, that she's preparing for. And so that is gonna be the first part of the business that comes back. The next part of the business that comes back, I would say probably in August, September, October, is gonna be the smaller um, conventions of um, the smaller meetings of 250 to 400, 500. Mm -hmm. um, and then later in the fall, you'll probably see some of the citywide that are still hanging on there. Uh, some of the three, four, 5,000 person conventions that are still hanging on. And then a huge indicator of how fast and how comfortable people are traveling and attending large scale conventions will be CES. So in January, early January, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll see how, how that, um, you know, how, how that goes and, and, and what the attendance looks like there. But I have no doubts that people want to get out and they want to meet in person companies. You know, I think what we've seen, the feedback that we've gotten from a lot of our clients who have gone virtual is that virtual does not provide the same amenities, the same interaction, the same ROI as an in-person meeting or convention. You can't have cocktail, I mean, you can, but we're all over Zoom cocktails, but you know, you can't really <laughs> network and, and really build a relationship and maybe close a deal if that's the purpose of you flying to Vegas 
over a Zoom call. You know, that, that, that's never going to replace you taking a few clients down to the center bar and buying them a cocktail or taking them out to a fancy dinner after, after you know, in, in the night or taking them out to the show or whatever. So that part of it is also, you know, that's, that's not going to be replaced by, by virtual meetings and neither is the educational portion. You know, I've, I've been on multiple Zoom webinars and all this other stuff in the last two months. And the reality is that you don't pay attention as much. You know, you, your kids are running around, your dogs are running around, your phone rings, you see, you know, something on the TV that distracts you. So you're not really paying attention as much as you would be if you were sitting in a, in a classroom setting at a convention space or at a general session. So we're confident it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while, but we're confident that that'll come back. And, and it's, it's just a, such a huge, um, uh, factor uh, that's going to determine the success of the city and and you know if we succeed our employees succeed we're able to hire a lot more of them back it just trickles down all the way to all the sectors of of the of the city so well yeah. that's 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 sounds like a great plan i mean i think everybody had to kick it into gear and figure out how do we come back from something as severe as this so we had um Thank you very much for all that information. That is a wealth of knowledge for everybody. So we really appreciate that. I know in the, and you were saying the transition of how these future conferences or conventions will look where you may want to watch part of it from your room is a, a little bit of what I'm seeing now in Min, which is a huge real estate conference um, and usually attracts a big crowd is happening right now. And it's, fully virtual, but I will say that it also gives you the opportunity to kind of get more educated because before when, you know, you go and you sit in the general session and you have to pick which portion you're going to be able to watch, you would only, you'd miss out. I'd be like, well, there's three sessions I want to watch at 10 a.m. today. And right now the way they're doing it is you actually have the option to jump back in. So if you missed it live, they are letting you watch it the rest of the time. So you don't really miss out on it. I feel like there's, that is a, a good bonus to add on. And if they keep that in the future, I think that'll be, that'll be fantastic. So I'm really looking, you're making me want to go and be there at 1201 when the hotel's open. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see, maybe I'll see you there if you're there. You're, you'll probably be sleeping or, or are you going to be there at 1201? No, I got a four year old at home. I, I'll, be <laughs> sleeping, but I'll be back really early to see how all right. Well, uh, I probably, if I, if I do make it, I'll let you know it's close to home. But anyway, thank you so much for all that information. We really appreciate it. I'm going to um, take it back to our real estate side, which is uh, the world that we're all in. So Carl, you had mentioned that you're not seeing huge changes, right? I had pulled some reports. Um, I'll see if I can get to those numbers here. But to see the differences in 2018 and to 2019 in some of these figures, um, but you're saying on the day-to-day -day with your business, Carl just went dark on this. Um, <laughs> he has, a, he, he has a fancy sensor. office. <laughs> there is light sensor. Keep in mind the building that we got was owned by an electrician. They light censored every room. So if there's oh. not movement, if I'm not moving enough, then my light turns out. So nice, but I'm saving nice. the world, so it's okay. Yeah, we'll take it. The world needs a lot of help, so we'll take it. Um, so we, we don't see a big drop. Like we actually were uh, end of the month, the beginning of every month, we always look at our last month and our last month did actually very well. We actually hit our goal, um, as a company. Um, and our real estate industry, I feel like the numbers are just, they're definitely be doing better than the expectations that I had. And maybe I was being a little doom and gloom. I'm not sure, but on your end, you say, you see, that's what you're saying. You oh. see, I don't know that uh, I'm your comparing, I, so I don't know that I'm comparing 2019 to 2020. More or less, I'm saying that March had a little bit of a shock. I'm comparing April to May, and I, th okay. I think it's more of the same. So I don't, I guess I'm comparing last month to the prior month that we just finished, and I anticipate June being similar. I'm just saying that we're demands down a little bit, right? Because some people don't have jobs, but then again, supplies down a little bit. And so the, the, the balance is there. I mean, there's still not enough inventory of affordable houses. Of affordable housing. Yeah. And that's what we talked a little bit about where affordable housing, that's the key because the different segments or the different sectors like uh, luxury versus condo, but they, they all look a little bit different, but the, the like commodity in our industry for right now, um, is moving quickly. Right. Yeah. I, so 
so luxury and love other people to jump in on this luxury is moving. Um, and I, I find that odd, but it's, it's just, it just goes to show, I mean, the media talks a lot about the middle class is getting shrunk, right? And, and the, where the demand and things are, but luxury is moving. Um, you, go, you go up into the 1.2 range and, and the days on market really haven't gone down. Um, they're very, very similar to what they were. Um, but if, we, if you can put a home on the market at about 250,000, I mean, a lot of people are gonna be nodding. That, that's a number that's gonna move all day. And at 350 and below in the right neighborhood, you won't have a problem either. Uh, maybe it's a little bit longer. Maybe it takes you 30 to 60, but that's pretty normal. Um, so we, we don't have a lot of issues there. We have to assume that uh, a lot of this will catch up with us. Um, yeah. Because some of these people, so, so Raul, quick question. So if, if a third of the people or a third of the hotel rooms are back of stations, casinos, how many employees did you have and how many employees came back? Be, because we, we're projecting that by the end of the year, uh, uh, multiple experts told us that we might be in the ballpark of about 50% of the casino related or boulevard related jobs coming back. What do you think that number is? Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't have the exact number, but um, I know that we brought a lot more back than, than um, like the occupancy that we have. So um, I, I can get those numbers, but I, I think it was well over 50% of our staff is already back and, and uh -huh. we're going to phase them back in um, as, as the phases increase. Once the, you know, I think phase three is going to be 75%, phase four is just, you know, open your doors and take as much as you, as you can. Um, so I'm hopeful that by the end of the summer, we'll be around the 75% back. Um, and then, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, we have everybody back as, or as many as possible. So, and, and if I could jump in, do you think that that is because you're more locally based? Yes. That, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. So, you know, our restaurants, um, when you walk into most station properties, you look around, you see the, you, who's eating in the restaurants, who's playing on the casino floor. I would say it's, you know, 85, 90% local. So definitely we were probably one of the stronger ones that were able to bring a, a larger percentage. I would probably assume that most of our strip properties are, are in the 30s and 40 percent, um, just based on their occupancy. Gotcha. We well, fantastic. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's good news, though, that it was it's more than expected. So that that's and at least. We also want to make, a, and I think that'll, that'll go for everybody in the industry, we can't mess this up, right? Um, so we are also very conscious of the guest experience and the customer service. So I think with that in mind, we probably brought a lot more than the demand initially, just because we want to make sure that, that your servers, your housekeepers, your front desk agents, that everybody's well staffed and we're all prepared to offer great customer service because if we can't, if we don't, then it's going to be all over the media, right? Vegas wasn't ready, yada, yada. Um, so I think we've, everybody probably brought a lot more than, than the demand initially, but we'll ramp up quickly. Fantastic. I think that our, you know, on our end, my, my corporation too, is we kind of are waiting to see a little bit. So some of it is kind of waiting it out. Like, do we, we got to watch what the market's doing. We got, you know, there's all this talk a second phase and all that. So you definitely want rather be more cautious and make sure that, you know, you're not a part of the problem and then, you know, and then blow the roof off, hopefully, ideally, right? I think uh, people do enjoy Las Vegas greatly. They're not gonna be able to go out of the country probably for a while. So um, I'm, I still stay optimistic and you're giving us some, some hope on, on the figures being better than, than what I was thinking they were gonna be as well. So um, on that, we're going to see Mr. DeHart. What do you think? How has anything changed in lending that's gonna make or break us, good or bad? <laughs> yeah, look, the narrative has changed kind of like real estate. You know, the more, on the mortgage side, things are looking bright. Um, you know, the forbearance programs, at one point, you know, again, the narrative was it's going to cripple the mortgage industry and, and that's not going to happen. So we're really seeing some light at the end of the tunnel right now. We're starting to see programs come back, more mm -hmm. jumbo investors, um, you know, the non-QM stuff still on the sidelines, but I project that to start coming back soon. Those are the bank statement, uh, you know, one day out of foreclosure type loans. No big deal if they don't come back right away. But yeah, we're just getting very surprising numbers day in and day out. Like just today, 
Um, for instance, the ADP unemployment report came out. They were projecting 8.7 million job losses in May. They missed it by a little bit, 2.76 million. So, so that's outstanding. So it, that's it really outstanding. Just, just like the, you know, the station casinos, like me and Carl were thinking, you know, maybe 50% come back and they're projecting hopefully 100%. So I really, you know, things are picking up and, you know, and, and then you just look at the purchase apps. We're, we're up seven straight weeks. Uh, we went up 5% from last week, was 9% from the week before. Now that makes sense because again, people are starting to go back to work. The economy is opening up, but this number is really shocking to me. Um, from year over year, we're actually up 18% in purchase apps versus the prior year. <laughs> now, look, I'm not, I, I, look, Vegas is an anomaly. You know, we've been yeah. harder than, than most, and let's face it. I, I don't see that, but that just goes to show you that, you know, all these, like you said, these doom and gloom projections, you know, I, I think we were a little off and, and we're going to be okay. And the numbers speak for themselves. So the mortgage industry is sound. We're starting to see everything come back and, uh, you know, a lot of pent up demand right now. So these numbers might cool off a little bit. But it, it's great to see, you know, and rates are still historic lows. So the mortgage industry is definitely sound right now, for, for sure. That's, that, those are amazing figures. Like, wow. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that. But on top of it, too, now you, you're speaking just purchases. So because the refi world is blowing up as well, right? Yeah, so good, good point. So the refinances were up. 137% from last year, which is actually down because a couple months ago, they were actually up 250%. So, so th those are cooling off a little bit, but there's still, I mean, there's a ton of refinance originations happening, right? But, you know, a lot of the low hanging fruit has kind of gone away. You know, it's, you know, we've slowed down a little bit for sure. And I, I'm sure most mortgage companies have, but there's still, a, there's a ton of people out there. Like you got a rate, it's 4%. It's time to refinance, right? If, you know, if you've got equity in your house and you can pay off some debts and put some money in the bank for, for reserves so you can sleep like a baby, you know, it's, it's, that's not going away anytime soon because rates are going to, you know, the Fed's buying mortgage-backed securities because there wasn't any demand. They're keeping rates where they're at. And uh, it, it, that's going to that's gonna happen for at least till the end of the year, in my, my estimation. So good things happening for the mortgage industry right now. Well, and we need the mortgage industry for most of us, <laughs> for, for all, many ca non-cash buyers. But that's, that's really good news. I, I'm really happy to hear that. Um, Carl, ha, on, on your end, what, so those, do those numbers surprise you? They surprise me. Well, I think we'd always expect more out of stations, right? Because of the, the local factor and it'll come down to McCarran on the, on the boulevard, right? We need, we need, if McCarran can pull planes more than just Californians coming in on the weekend kind of a thing, then, then we'll maybe we can start to rebound a little bit better. But right now we're probably looking at about the 50% for the downtown area on employment. Um, so that bodes to say that, look, you've only got savings for so long. It still makes me believe that this fall will still have some issues. Um, but just don't, I don't see the traction stopping on real estate because it hasn't in April and May. I don't see it stopping in June and July. I just, I just don't, I don't, you know. See, but uh, you know what, where I, I sit, this is our busy time normally. Do you know what I mean? So December slows down, November, December typically uh, slow down a little bit. I mean, what, wh how's our year gonna end? You know, 2020 has been so interesting, but. So statistically though, August is one of the slower months and, and it probably is a lot to think of a normal year, think of last year. You, you kind of want to get away in August and the heat and, and just at the end of the summer, a lot of people travel, school's going back, a lot of people, you know, it just, it just changes up real estate a little bit. So usually traditionally August on a listing and buys and sells go down a Kids little bit. Kids are going back to school. I, I just think August is going to not be great. Okay. <laughs> I think that's when we're going to see our first signs of kind of some negative uh, and we're going to feel a little more uncomfortable in August. But on the same note, talk someone into selling their home right now and I think you're in good shape I, I just uh, you've got June and July and uh, to get it under contract and get it sold I would talk them into moving right now if they're saying well I might wait a little bit unless they unless there's some other experience or you know something in their life they just have to wait if it's a choice they should sell now I think that it makes sense to sell now um, you know and, and move 
So, because I think inventory is going to creep up a little bit by, by the end of summer, early fall. And you can get a great loan if you need a new, your new loan on your, on your purchase. Yeah. Uh, Dustin, where are the rates right now? I, they haven't moved much. Are they still in the low threes? Yeah, they are. You know, there's a ton of things that go into an interest rate, but yeah, I'm, I'm still locking rates under three, you know, depending on loan to value and credit score. Um, right. We're talking, um, you know, typical, best case. Yeah. The typical rates in the low threes right now, for sure. Fantastic. And then what's, what are you seeing as far as uh, cash out purchases or cash out refis, excuse me, not purchases. Um, is there, a, I mean, there's still some lending out in that, but is it, are most yeah, people pulling out money? We have, yeah, look, you know, uh, the, the, it's the forbearance problems. You know, when the, that started to rear its ugly head, Fannie Mae said, well, if you do a cash out refinance and they go into first, their first payment, before their first payment, they go into forbearance, we, you, you can't sell the loan to us, right? So that spooked a lot of lenders and I don't blame them. Um, but a lot of good lenders like Nova and other other mortgage companies, you know, they weathered the storm. They didn't, you know, it's a lot, you know, companies did stop altogether doing cash out refinances. Some put in 500 basis points price level adjustments, which means they stopped doing cash out refinances, right? We didn't, and a lot of other companies didn't. And, you know, it proved to be a, a, a sound move because, you know, the forbearance prop, here's the deal with forbearances. There's 10% of the home loans in forbearance right now but 60% of them are actually making their payments. So it's really not as bad as we all thought. And those numbers are gonna to start to plummet going into next month because of you know, everybody getting back to work and the economy opening up. So it, it's all good stuff right now. You, know, the ca you can get a cash out refinance. Now getting a home equity line of credit at your bank, that might not happen. So go to, your, go to a good mortgage company and get a cash out refinance if you need to. And the rates for that, are those pretty, are they close to, the yeah, they, you know, and again, that depends on loan to value. Um, if you can keep it under 75%, it's not that far off from a right rate and term refinance. And when you start dipping above 80, you know, into that 80% range, that's when it starts, it starts to tick up a little bit. And it, again, the better the credit score, the better the interest rate. But if you have a decent credit score and your loan to value is under 75%, you can get a cash out refinance in, in the mid threes right now. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Well, we are past our 30 minute time. So I'm going to, I am going to open it up for questions, but uh, before I do that, I did want to touch base on a little bit of our changes. So we um, we're slowly making the move to open up all the offices. Most of the buildings are open now, so you can actually come, but our offices are still appointment only. So we don't have traffic coming in and out of the office. That way we can ensure that everything is properly um, disinfected and everything because we're managing the appointments that way but we are doing more we're still most people still want to do a sign at home and have a notary come out to them um, I think the general consensus is that most people think it's uh, just safer you're you're not leaving and putting yourself into a, a public environment and we, you know we're pretty close with folks but we we have the plexiglass screens we're disinfecting it everything but the offices are slowly opening up more and we're seeing more traffic from consumers in our offices so that's uh, a positive change on our end as well and um and i'm gonna just touch on some figures from last month so last month we see that there was 2349 single family condos and townhomes sold last month. Um, of those, 308 were cash, 112 were conventional, 595 were FHA, and 286 were VA. So um, this is the type of report that we put out every month. If these figures look interesting to you, let me know and I can send this out to you. I just a little picture of it. Um, and it has a lot more information. So it's, it's interesting to go back and look at some of this stuff because that, this little graph, for example, has gone from, you know, it was all practically REO, all practically short sale. And now, you know, we're regu regular residential resale. So as our market changes, our reporting changes, and, and it's interesting to see just the drastic differences in our, in our industry. Um, Jeff, I am going to hand it over to you and see what we're going to tackle for questions. Do we have any questions? We don't. Actually, huh. no questions at all. What? It's crazy. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, that's just terrible. We were gonna, we were actually going to touch on luxury, um, and I want to address that a little bit deeper. But we are going to move that to another segment. We had the opportunity to have Raul on today, and he was able to, you know, obviously gaming and uh, the hotel industry and conventions and conferences are. We don't. Our city doesn't survive without it. I mean, that's that's what we're made of. So we wanted to take the opportunity to dig into his his experience and his knowledge and have him let us know what's happening uh, in a world that we all depend on to uh, to keep our city flowing. So I took the opportunity and had him on the show today, but we will touch on luxury a little bit deeper on the next segment. Um, so anybody have any questions that they want to add before we close out then? Uh, one question from Josina. Uh, she asked if the movie theaters will be open. So uh, based on my little, uh, here's what I got, right? So starting May 29th, bars not serving food were able to open. Aesthetic services, spas and massage therapy, body art piercing establishments, gyms, facilities, recreational areas and pools. And they did address I think they address movie theaters. Uh, let's see here. So it says church or high density gatherings will be limited to a maximum of 50 people. Um, I would say that they're, they're able to open, but they uh, have to keep it at 50 people, it sounds like, but I, they didn't address it specific in, in the governor's so our, uh, our, theater, our movie theaters that are at stations, they are allowed to open. Uh, most of them have chosen not to open, obviously, until the casinos are open. So we'll probably see a lot of our uh, casinos open, I mean, our movie theaters open later in the month, if not like the first uh, couple of weeks in July. Okay. Well, most most of the Hollywood today. theaters have bumped their premieres back anyway, right? To end of the summer, into the fall, into the winter. So you're not going to have a lot of major releases. And if you don't have a lot of major releases, you don't have a lot of draws to get to the theater. Correct. So. There was actually a report today that AMC Theaters, which I believe is the biggest uh, movie, movie theaters in the world, um, they have doubt that they'll remain in business. Yeah. <laughs> no, say it isn't so. Like a couple of hours ago, yeah. Well, they'll have to do kind of a, a maybe a drive drive up kind of deal, but kind of indoors. It's too hot to have it only outdoors in our in Las Vegas anyway. I, I think like Netflix is only going to get bigger, right? Yeah, yeah Netflix, Amazon. I I know personally, so I I did go out this. Uh, over the weekend just to a couple of places and I kind of felt like the service just wasn't as great. I was happy to hear Raul saying that they brought on more staff to actually make sure that the experience is great because it is super important. I mean, if people come out here and there's already all these restrictions and they're coming to, you know, let loose and have a little fun and just relax or do something a little different and yet there's already a lot of change but then the service is bad, that's kind of a downer. and. I was happy to, you know, be out and uh, grab a bite to eat with a few friends and family. But I will say in my experience, and I'll, I'll leave the restaurants nameless, but it wasn't as great of an experience. I thought that it was kind of like the, the D staff, not the like A, hit a home run, make sure we're doing great service and that everybody was happy. So, but there's, it's so much pressure. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really judging because, you know, I'm all about love, but I will say that it was a little bit different. I thought it could have been a little bit of a smoother experience and uh, the menus were very limited. So I'm sure there's some challenges in that. I've never run a restaurant, but maybe there's challenges getting, getting suppliers in and things like that. But I, I'm overall, I think it's a good outlook. I think a lot of people do want to get out and do things. You get a little stir crazy, even on the happiest of, environments even if you love your house it's big enough you got space or you're all on top of each other and you love it you still get a little seeing people and being social is important so i think uh to to i, I got a question on here jeff that i see who do i love more stephanie you're hysterical <laughs> Um, so thank you girls for being on here. Stephanie and Sarah are, are both joining us today so I was really happy to have them on here but um, Raul, 
Do you have an email or yeah, a VIP I host? I sent you my email. Uh, yeah, I'll put you in contact with our VIP hosts. And see, we, we got people wanting VIP bottle service. What's going on? Uh, uh, the other question that I just saw, will our restaurants have a full menu? And yes, most of our restaurants will have a few menu. The reason why you see a lot of the initial restaurants that opened up, it's, it's more of like, um, you know, the profit margin in restaurants is already so slim so, that, right. you know, they wanted to make sure when they opened that they weren't carrying a huge inventory. Uh, um, you know, having to buy hundreds of ingredients if you're not going to be selling them, uh, right, stuff okay. that's perishable. So that's why you saw a lot of the initial restaurants because they didn't know, right? They didn't know that all of us were ready to get out and start eating again. Um, so I think you'll, you'll see a lot of the restaurants probably once the casinos open um, have full menus back. You're welcome. Um, I did have a, I actually got a text to include our market report for April. So I did put that in there. If you guys want me to add you to an e email blast that I send out with uh, reports like this, I can do that. I am not an over sharer with, uh, with content because I don't, I hate to see myself get removed from the e-blasting. So, so I try to keep it minimal and just important information if you guys would like some. So let me know about that. And um, I think that is probably going to wrap us up. But if you guys have any questions or anything you want to touch on in the next uh, coming weeks, we will be back in two weeks. The Eventbrite has all of the events for the rest of the year on there. There may be changes possibly if, you know, depending if we can go and do it in an open setting again in the near future, we would maybe attempt that. I don't know if we're going to wrap up the year all virtually or not, but for right now, I did put everything in Eventbrite so you can register for all our future events. We're going to continue to try and keep, obviously our main, main deal is real estate here. So we'll keep bringing real estate information and let you know what's changing and where there's opportunity and where there's, you know, changes. And obviously we're going to try and also have great guests like Mr. Raul Daniels uh, today so that we have information about our lovely city and stay up to date as to what's going on. So let's get out there and support all of our local establishments, support our, our casinos who, is, who keep us entertained and on a local level. I mean, those, those are like big homes for a lot of us locals. So we got to support them to support the restaurants and do a staycation. That sounds fun. Yeah. The spas are open. I'm excited. So um, if anybody have any, has any other questions, please feel free to put that in the chat. Otherwise, register for our next event, which I didn't say what day it was. Let me look. It's in two weeks. 17th. The 17th. Okay. So June 17th, 10 a.m. If there's anything you guys want to touch on, please let me know. And if I know that we put Carl and uh, Jeff's information in the chat. Did we get your information out there, Dustin? If not, you guys reach out and we'll be glad to get that out to you. Jeff, were we able to put Dustin's info in the chat too? Uh, I can drop it in there right now. Okay. And then I think everybody's gotten an email from me, so you should all have my contact information. Please do reach out if you need anything. And I'm here to serve your title needs. Or if you have any ideas on things you want to do or need any ideas from me, we've made a lot of changes to go virtual. We're here to help. So thank you very much. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank you to our Thanks, panel. Guys. Thank, thank you. you.